Welcome to the Steve Molsberg Show, everybody, on this Monday. Steve is off for the next couple of days. I'm Ed Berliner sitting in, and also Diane Diamond joins us today. Diane, a pleasure to have you on board. Thank you. It's been great. It's been so fun. You, i gotta, I got to bring this up. I, I'm just reading this. Understand, by too, that in the, in, the, in the break, Diane's been going, this. This is the one Look right here, this. Berliner. James Carville. Okay, we all know who James Carville is. Yes. He's the Democratic uh, consultant with the bald head who's married to the beautiful Mary Matlin. Don't ask me how that happened, but anyway, this is what he says. Quote, if the GOP loses to Hillary, their party will become extinct. First of all, that's sort of the best uh, uh, signal yet that Hillary is going to be running for president in 2016. But what does he mean, that the Republican Party is going to become extinct? Well, it's all hyperbole. We know this. That's how he speaks. That's how the commentators speak in that that's area. That's the political game, uh, yeah. that, That's really all it is, but I will tell you. I. He's got a point, not extinct, but certainly there's going to be a difficult time recovering if the Republicans take a hammering again at the ballot box this time around, if indeed Hillary does run. Because you've got eight years of Barack Obama, the media is against you. Now you're going to have four and possibly even eight years of Hillary Clinton. It does not bode well for the Republicans. They, if the Republicans need to be relevant again, to the majority of America, they must win in 2016. Don't you think that starts with picking a head of the GOP besides Reese Priebus, who I don't know what he stands for or what his plan is? There's a lot of people, again, and we talked about this last hour, who need to be more, don't throw around what's wrong with America. Tell us about what you are going to make yeah. right with America. I, I, yeah. I really think that people are just tired of hearing a lot of the hammering back and forth. Well, and you see the turnout at the polls. I, I don't think anything's going to change until both parties really start talking solutions and start getting more people to the polls. I more people agree. voted in Afghanistan than voted here. Well, now we switch gears a little bit to something that has become another issue that many of us are talking about. The Catholic Church. The Pope wants to apologize and wants forgiveness from Catholics. But the big question is, is the Pope and the Catholic Church doing enough to warrant forgiveness? I feel compelled to take upon myself all the evil that some priests, quite a few in number, but obviously not so many in relation to the total number of priests, to take upon myself all the evil and ask forgiveness for the damage they inflicted for the sexual abuse of children. Welcome back to the Steve Molsberg Show, everybody. I'm Ed Berliner, along with Diane Diamond. Thank you so much for joining us, and a very happy Passover to all of our viewers. The Pope has now gone on record as asking for an apology from people regarding all of the many instances of sexual abuse, child abuse, different issues that have gone on in the Catholic Church. But perhaps it's time to be a little bit more proactive. We'll discuss that and a whole lot more as we welcome in the president of the Catholic League. It is a pleasure to have Bill Donahue with us today. Bill, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Bill, that's a question that I have, and I will preface this with a story. As I went on Sunday to St. Patrick's Cathedral and went and attended Mass, I spoke to a number of Catholics there after the Mass and asked them what they thought about the Pope requesting that people uh, please forgive us for what we've done in the past. Every single person that I spoke with said we would only hope, in one way, shape, form, or another, that the Pope is more proactive and goes after some of the problems and helps to clean up the Catholic Church and make us proud of the Church again. Can he be that proactive? And at this point, what can he do? Well, I, I beg to differ with these people. Maybe it's because I do this for a living. Um, we've averaged 7.6 credible accusations against 40,000 priests in the last six years. This problem which took place, which was an utter disgrace, was between approximately 1965 and 1985. That coincides with the sexual revolution and then the discovery of AIDS in 81. What I'm saying is that this problem has largely been checked. There's a major problem in other demographic groups of which the media have no interest in pursuing, never mind the public schools altogether. So what can this pope do about what? I mean, I don't know of a single institution which has less of a problem, proportionately speaking today, than the Catholic Church when it comes to the sexual abuse of minors. Well, you know, Bill, there have been so many lawsuits that are still out there pending. And it, as a Catholic myself, I, I hear what the Pope is saying. I actually admire this Pope a lot. I think he's bringing a great breath of fresh air to the Church. But if he really wants to get this behind the Church, don't you need to have a bigger push here in the United States of America to get rid of these lawsuits, stop fighting them, and, and figure out how to settle them? Well, I'll tell you, you're not going to get rid of the, the bogus lawsuits, of which there are many. Practically every single case that we hear about in the media goes back to the 1970s. 
How do I know this? Because I read the United States Conference of Catholic Bishops report on this, which just was released a few weeks ago. It's the exact same timeline. Most of this stuff took place between 1970 and 1974. As I said before, if you want to take a look at the big picture, 65 to 85. I guess I'm a bit exasperated. What exactly do they want him to do? It's very hard for practicing homosexuals to get into the Catholic Church these days. And 80% of all the kids who were abused were abused. They were adolescents. They were not pedophiles. I know this from the John Jay study on this. And I'm not saying that homosexuals are predators. I want to make it very clear. Most gay priests are good guys. Unfortunately, most of the predators have been gay. So just as I often point out, I'm Irish. My people have a problem with the drink. Does that mean that because you're Irish, you're automatically an alcoholic? Wait a That's minute. I'm Irish, I'm, I, I'm Irish too, Bill, so watch <laughs> it here. I, I hear what you're saying. However, I am from the state of New Mexico. I grew up in New Mexico, and there is a place in upstate New Mexico where all the priests went, and that is still in operation. Why? I think the biggest problem is not only the church not recognizing it up until this point, so this was a great first step, but so few priests have actually had to pay by going to prison. That's, I think, what the victims want more than anything. Well, look, I, I will never defend, I, as I've said uh, correctly, uh, correctly uh, quoted by the New York Times many times before, I'm not the water boy for the Catholic Church, and if you expect Bill Donny to defend the indefensible, that would never happen. As far as I'm concerned, these guys should have been thrown out. Instead, what too many yeah. of the bishops did, they leaned on their advisors, many of whom were psychiatrists, and the zeitgeist, the spirit of the times was, we can fix everybody through therapy. <laughs> well, no, they can't. And I would have taken a more punitive approach. I would have thrown these guys out a long time ago. So I have no sympathies for them. I guess my own sense of exasperation comes from the fact that I'm not exactly certain what we're supposed to do with the problem, which is virtually non-existent today. As far as the guys in the past, fortunately, and for the sake of the Catholic Church, a lot of the bad guys are dead. Well, then let's, let's talk about that then, because I talked about what I heard, and you certainly are talking about what you, what you know from history. So you have that perception of yes. people sitting at the ground. We're talking about the parishioners themselves. Mm -hmm. What can the Catholic Church from the Pope on down do then to convince them what you've just said, that we're on top of this, we're taking care of this, that we are cleaning this up, when, in essence, the media doesn't seem to get it? Right. Well, if there's two problems here. One part is the media. They don't want to report on good news in the Catholic Church. If there's a Father Murphy who does something wrong, believe me, you'll find out about it. The other part of the blame is not the media. It's the Catholic Church itself. They've made some strides in the last 10 years, but quite frankly, the way they communicate is awful. I would not give the Catholic Church high marks, and I'd begin with the Vatican, as well as the Bishops' Conference and the like. They have not done a good job in getting the word out. I am the one who has to do the math every year and try to figure out what percent is this. Why aren't they doing it? I, I think there's a lot of blame. Why aren't they with getting it, Bill? I mean, it, it seems pretty simple in, in this day and age of media to get it, that sort of message. So why I, aren't I they still getting it? Are they still stuck in the past? I think there's a kind of defensiveness, too, which I understand, because I get called every name in the book for simply saying the facts of what I've been talking about here today. But you're just to assume, then, that maybe you're covering up for somebody. I'm not going to mention the person right now, but there's a guy who's pretty big in this so-called victims group, and I say so-called because I, I know quite a bit about what's going on here. Bring me back another day and I'll tell you exactly what's going on. And he made an accusation against Cardinal Dolan that he was hiding 55 priests. I've asked him many times publicly. I still want to know, what are their names? Who is Cardinal Dolan hiding? It's an absolute scam on the part of some of these people. Now look, again, if somebody truly has been victimized, my heart goes out to that person. They are due justice, and the bad guys ought to be punished. Throw the book at them. But I'm telling you, there's an awful lot of people out there throwing mud, just hoping that it sticks. There are lawyers out there who've made a fortune off of this stuff, whether they win or lose. Yeah, Mr. Donahue, though, I, I just can't let it pass to have you say that, it, it, that this problem is all in the past. Because I write about this stuff all the time. I, I, I'm a crime writer. I write about crime and justice in America. And I will tell you, the pedophiles are everywhere. They are still in the church. They are in the Postal Service and in the Girl Scouts and the Boy Scouts and in teachers' ranks. They are everywhere. So I hope that the Catholic Church doesn't think this is all behind us and, oh, it's done. We don't have to do anything. Well, let me take issue with you on two things. Number one, my figure is correct, and you don't have any evidence to the contrary. 7.6 accusations, credible accusations made against 40,000 priests in the last six years. And we now, know where, that they're where not the always... Others? They do, uh, victims do not always come forward right, right. away. Well, and that's the, they that, never that's come the old saw when you have nothing else to play. Less than 5% of the priests that were pedophiles. How do I know that? 
The John Jay College of Criminal Justice came up with that figure, not Bill Donio. I don't make this up, but I know what I'm talking about. Bill, let's switch gears here because there is a, a study that recently came out from the Pew Group that talked about, is America as religiously diverse as you might think? Now, I'll ask that question. The Pew study says, no, we're not as religiously diverse. That, that's kind of interesting, and I understand that you're not exactly in agreement with it. No, I'm actually very much in agreement oh, okay. with the Pew study. No, they're, they're accurate. I mean, they're ac their, their work has been uh, splendid over the years. My argument is with the media, in part, because they didn't want to report on that, because there's a lot of money tied up in the diversity industry, both in the public and the private sectors, all right? And they would have us believe that we are all so, we are all so super diverse, that's why we can't celebrate Christmas at Christmas time, all right? And it's a lie. Something like 78% of the people in this country are Christian, 95% of all the people in this country who identify with, with a religion are Christian. Now, that doesn't mean that we shouldn't have tolerance for everybody else. I don't want Christianity shoved down anybody's throat. What I'm saying is that there's a vested interest in keeping the myth alive. We are number 68 out of 232 countries. We're rated moderate when it comes to diversity. And I know why they don't want to let the, the story out, because that undercuts the argument that we've got to protect all these people from these Christians at Christmas time. I, I find that nefarious. Yeah, I'm with you on that, Bill. Boy, am I with you on that. You know, one way to make even more people come into the fold, of course, for the Catholic Church, would be to give women a bigger role. What do you see this pope doing about that? Well, he can't make them priests. That's, that's, that, that's something he doesn't have the authority to do. Now, women already run basically the administrative structure of the Catholic Church. They run the chancery office and the like, and they're doing a magnificent job. Uh, so I don't know exactly where he's going to go with this. Uh, it's not like a question of celibacy. Celibacy is a man-made rule. It was the norm for the first thousand years, and then it became mandatory. He could change celibacy. We already have married priests in the Catholic Church. Uh, and quite frankly, the, the, the woman I want to be seen, main priest and, and pope, are precisely the ones who don't want to become priests, the sisters of life, and the others who are not hungering for power. But uh, listen, I, you know, women need to be treated fairly, obviously, but I don't see women priests happening, not under this pope or any pope. Bill, it's always a pleasure. Thanks for coming, and thanks for straightening us out a little bit. And also, thanks for the statistics, because I think some of the stuff that you told us today, we don't hear a lot about. But then we again, don't. that's kind of part and parcel with the way the media goes these days. And that's why we do what we do. That's right. Bill, thanks so much for joining thank us. You, thank you, to both of you. Thank, thank you. And so a happy much. Easter, too. Yeah. We'll be a little bit ahead of things, but that's okay. Thank you so much for joining us, Bill. But let's get right back to that. It's the statistics, again, that we yeah. always are arguing here, no matter what happens. We're always talking about who has the real stats and who actually talks about the real stats. Right. And because we have stats, are they correct stats? I mean, maybe they are. But, you know, again, I write a lot about child molestation, and the figures on that are pretty mercurial. It's time for you to decide then, all right? We'll be back. We have a lot more. This is the Steve Molesberg Show, just in case you're wondering. And, of course, Steve is taking the day off. He's got today and tomorrow off, so we're sitting in. Diane Diamond has been covering so many national stories for so many years. I'm Ed Berliner, Newsmax host. And we'll be back with a little bit more of what may be, uh, I can only imagine, would be controversial items that people will want to discuss. It happens all day right here on NewsmaxTV.com.